Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Ishin UZ65, or UZ65? This form factor might be the most popular form factor in our hobby. Let me know what you think down below, whether you agree or disagree. Running 0802, 19,000 kV motors, 35 millimeter HQ props, run cam nano three with the new lens. Flight controller all on one board is the Crazy B F4 with a five amp four in one ESC built in and an SPI receiver if you choose that type. It does have a separate power switchable VTX from 25 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts. Solid pin PH20 connector. It comes with four Ishii branded 300 milliamp 1S batteries, an extra set of props, screwdriver, prop remover, and a few extra screws, a little USB charger to get you started, instruction sheet for binding, and also a wire map of the all-in-one board, and it comes in the typical Ishin box. Mine weighs 22 grams. As a refresher, the Mobula 6 weighs just under 20 grams, and with the battery, it weighs just under 30 grams all up. I'm getting 60 millimeters motor post or motor post. Yep, that's right. I'm still getting almost 66 millimeters on the Mobula 6. Starting off here inside the house, a little bit of a rough start off the table there. We're going to see a flight time of a little over three minutes and 30 seconds, and I think that's where a big factor in this prop size comes if you've been around the channel you know that we've oftentimes taken 65 millimeter quads put them on frames that support 40 millimeter props so at a 75 millimeter frame and we increase the speed we increase the flight time we've done that time and time again and so this is somewhere of a middle ground between those two and it's a good balance you know it's all not all puppy dogs and ice creams though there is one little detail i should tell you right away uh, after we get done with the inside flight and the outside flight, I do some speed runs. I had a handful of batteries left over one day, and I just decided to finally change the camera angle because I'd kind of forgotten to up to that point, and just to see how fast I could fly. It does fly very well, but unfortunately, I did not... I was not able to complete my speed runs as I had hoped. I think I had six or seven batteries, and I think I got four flights into that six or seven batteries before I had a crash, and now I've got a dead motor. I did verify that it's the motor and not the board. I'm not sure what happened to the motor, but uh, if you need to know or you'd like to know about how to troubleshoot, whether it's a motor or ESC issue, when you have one of those motors that kind of sputters, it kind of turns the prop a little bit, or it kind of just twitches back and forth some. If you take one of the other motors and you wire it to that ESC, one of the good known working motors, and you wire it to the ESC that that motor that was twitching was on, and it operates normally, then you know it was the motor, not the ESC. Uh, but this flies very well, and I think the, the big factor in making it fly well is the fact that it is running larger props on the same, essentially the same size. Oddly enough, motor post to motor post, it's a little bit smaller than most whoops, you know, it's 60 millimeters or a touch over. But it felt very good in the air, it flies very well. I'm not necessarily going my typical speed in this particular flight. Uh, sometimes I fly things better, you know, it just varies from day to day. You never know how you're going to fly. But I was pleased with how I fly, and I think most people are going to want to compare this to the Mobula 6. Now I think the Mobula 6 has become a lot more accessible. I'm a little late to the game on this. Initially I wasn't going to review it, but I decided after many of you asked me to, to go ahead and give it a go. And I think this one is going to have a smaller market just because it's going to probably only be sold through Banggood. Banggood has a worldwide reach, but here in the US and probably in other parts of the world, you have local resellers who are probably selling the Mobula 6, and hopefully enough people have bought those by now that maybe you can get one. This is more expensive than the Mobula 6, that's the other side of this. Oddly enough, Ishin typically beats most other companies when it comes to price, but in this case they did not, at least at the time I'm looking. The Mobula 6 comes in around $90 or a little under $90, depending upon if you catch one of those little sales or not. And this one is currently on, now that I check again, and it's on flash sale for $85. So now that I say all that, this is right in line with the Mobula 6. But I would say there's one big downside, and that is the lack of motor plugs. Uh, having done that work to di dissect or diagnose w if I had an ESC or motor problem, I have torn into this, and it is, it is a challenge to work on. And if you're someone who doesn't like to solder, especially tiny little wires on tiny little solder pads, that's going to be a big deal because eventually you're going to break a motor. It's just going to happen. Uh, something's going to break. That's what we do in this hobby. We bake, break, repair, and repeat. I use this uh, flight in large part because you got to see both the girls. And you see that one running up the stairs there. I actually heard her coming, and, but I heard her in the area and she could hear me flying, so she was fairly cautious. Uh, we've wrapped up the flight. Three minutes and 30 seconds total on the flight time. A little low on the battery, so you may want to gauge that to 3 minutes and 27 seconds if you're wanting to come in at 3.5 volts per cell. Here is our outside flight. It's very, very calm. Got pretty lucky there. Uh, another benefit of the Ishin Uzi or UZ, however you're supposed to say it, 
65 is that the canopy is much more robust. And I think there's a little bit of additional weight in that. I think when Happy Model made the Mobula 6, they were definitely shooting for 20 grams or even less than that because the canopy, it's missing that fourth post, which would secure that canopy better. I think this canopy for most people would be a good replacement. If you have a Mobula 6 and you've got the Jello in your camera, I would expect that this canopy would probably take care of that for you because it holds the camera a lot more steady. It is, it does feel more robust. It's not, it could break. I didn't break it and I crashed it all sorts of times, but it just feels more robust and they've got some rolled edges in that mold that make it feel like the edges are going to hold up to the typical pounding that you get in a quad that all up is about 30 grams. So that is another benefit. The frame is also different. It holds the battery better than the Mobula 6 does. Um, the Mobula 6 battery, I tend to run a rubber band through there in order to grip my battery a little bit better. This one holds the battery pretty well in its tray. Uh, it, the frame also feels like it's thicker material, and that's probably, again, a little bit of that weight that we see in the difference between the two quads. Props are also going to weigh a little bit more because they're physically larger. But as far as durability goes with the plastic or molded components, I would think they would be pretty good. They just feel more substantial than the Mobula 6 does. Of course, I went over to my neighbor's yard and kind of whizzed around there. Many people want to know about the range. Range on SPI receivers can vary. I have seen postings on Facebook of people having all sorts of troubles, whether it's video range or uh, control link or SPI receiver range issues. It just varies. I can't necessarily explain it. If you've got a real hot Wi-Fi area or you've got a cell tower near you or any other sort of RF interference, it can cause various problems when it comes to range and video clarity. Uh, something I can't necessarily help you with. Uh, but in my area, it's a residential area. We got Wi-Fi on just about every house, I would think. I could pick them up outside all over the place. There's probably five or six different Wi-Fi networks in my backyard. And... It, it operates fine for me. I went over the neighbor's yard. Mine works seemingly well, and this is an SPI receiver. It's the FR Sky version. On 1S, it's not going to be highly acrobatic, but I've done a few things as far as running it around so that you can kind of gauge the speed, the agility. I think most people, if you're a hardcore or tiny whoop racer, like if you like the racing style, you probably want the Mobula 6 still. But if you, uh, you know, if you have those skills or desires to repair, because eventually a motor is probably going to break, this is a very viable alternative. And now with their price point coming down to $85, of course, it's very temporary. Hopefully it's still in effect when you guys watch this video. I see it's one of those limited items as, as far as they'll sell so many at that price before they go up in price again. Those motors are soldered to the board. The board is smaller than normal. If they could make one of these with the motor connectors on there, I think that would be a great boon. As you see there, I over-rotated a little bit on that front flip, and then I go around. I just don't have enough juice. And you can see our minimum battery went down to 2.87. I'm then going to go pick it up, walk it over. You know, we got to test these things now. We've had the Mobula 6 has shown that it resets itself when it comes to running it down below 3 volts. So I go and pick up the quad. I walk it back over to the table, take out the battery, and then plug in a fresh battery and we're off and running again. So no three volt or below three volt reset. Everything is fine and dandy there. So you shouldn't have to worry about that. All right, this is after a crash. This is going to be a fast segment. It's gonna be about a minute. Unfortunately, this is about the time where I started having longer and longer fast runs. So I'd cranked up the camera angle. I am flying in acro mode. That's just how I fly. Most people I think fly these in angle mode or a variant of angle, angle mode called uh, NFE which is something uh, completely different altogether. NFE, not fast enough, uh, is a special mode that he designed on some firmware and it has made his way into things like Emu Flight. So if you want to fly in angle mode, but you want to have, uh, I think it's pitch that is still in angle and roll is in acro. I might have that reversed. I, I don't use it. I've tested it a few times, uh, but it's just not my thing. But so this is one of the speed runs. This is, I think, the one right before I kill the motor. And unfortunately, that was the end of my having fun with the speed runs. You can see I get a little bit out of control all the time. That's kind of one of those processes that you go through is you push right up to the edge where you're in control and then you start to lose control a little bit. But we've had another crash and we've bonked out. Oh, dang.
speed runs are also a really good durability test because I bang things all over the place when I'm trying to get a hang of it. First thing I'm going to talk about here is the VTX. There is foam tape underneath it and there is hot glue on the UFL connector. The hot glue is a good idea because with it being so proud out the top here, I think as you crash and you tumble, that UFL connector might have a propensity to come loose. Although I don't think hot glue is a good mix because I found that this VTX gets very hot as they normally do with micro VTXs. And then the hot glue gets very, very pliable almost to where, well, I touched it once and I got some on my finger that was stuck to it. So at that point where it's warm, it's not going to hold the UFL on nearly as well as when it's in that cold state and hardened state. Also, I had an experience where I was getting set up to go for another fly and the doorbell rang. It happened to be the DHL man, Carl. He's a nice guy. He brings all our packages that come from DHL. And I went to the door to answer that. And by the time I had gotten back from the door, which wasn't all that long, I would say you know, two minutes, you know, Carl's got a lot of packages to deliver, so he can't hang out and talk much. Uh, the VTX started to brown out because it was overheating. Uh, I didn't have any problems after that with the VTX. I flew it plenty more after that, but it's something to note that if you have this machine powered on, don't just let it sit on your desk without flying or having a fan on it to cool it. It could potentially have some damage that come into play. Also, I talked about the canopy. The canopy is, I mean, I'm squeezing it and it's much more rigid than the Mobulus 6 canopy. You know, the Mobulus 6 doesn't take much. It's real pliable. It just bends all over the place. And these edges are kind of rolled. So I'm very interested in replacing my Mobulus 6 canopies with the UZ or UZ uh, canopies. I think this is a much better canopy as far as the durability goes. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have one to weigh separately uh, to see what the weight difference is. I would suspect this canopy weighs almost twice as much as this, which I think is probably still only a gram, maybe 1.2 or 1.3 three grams on the UZ65 versus the Mobula 6 canopy probably weighs like 0.7 grams. But, you know, for us that are just kind of having fun in, in our house and stuff, that extra durability factor could be a big issue. Also, the frame seems to be made out of the same material. It feels more rigid. It feels more hardened. It's not nearly as flexible as the Mobula 6. Again, there's probably a weight difference between these two. Uh, so if you're a hardcore racer and you compete, you probably want the lightest possible frame, which would be the Mobula 6. But if you're more casual, more of a hobbyist, and you just want your frame to live, this is probably the one to get. Unfortunately, we can't put the Mobula 6 all in one board in here because the physical dimensions, the, the holes will line up. But as you can see, there is a big difference in how they've structured the board to where it comes up right up against those whoops on the inside part, that star shape. They're cur it's curved in there. Maybe the bottom is a better view of it. See how it's curved in there and it's real tight? The Mobula 6 board is, is still straight edge, so it won't work in there. Also, my motor wires, I left those undone after I diagnosed that it was a motor, so I know which one to replace. Uh, also kind of a proof of, proof of concept that I was in there and that I did do that repair or at least looked at that repair. Uh, another thing I mentioned during the flight was how this battery tray holds things in. I moved this out of the way. I, well, I meant to after I put it all back together. I didn't all the way. So I fished this out so that I could run uh, stick batteries because I think by default it came down. Where would it have come down? I don't really remember. Did it come out and through the back hole? It came out somewhere. I relocated it on this one somehow, but I, re I relocated it so that I could run stick batteries. I didn't have to run batteries with leads on it. And as you can see with this battery tray, it holds it in there really, really well. So that's a good thing versus on the Mobula 6. You see I have my little rubber band that hangs off these two little nubbins and that's how I keep my batteries in there because this battery tray is much more loose. Matter of fact, uh, I think on my review, I broke one of these bottom pieces down here on the battery tray uh, from getting my, probably from getting my batteries in and out. It may have also been from uh, crashing or landing abruptly and the battery impact on those two bars at the top part of that battery tray. I found the wire management to be done pretty well. It stayed out of harm's way. I didn't find the VTX moved around much. Again, it's got that foam tape. It's not super strong foam tape, so you shouldn't be at risk of pulling any of the components off the flight controller. If you did want to relocate or it got forcefully relocated in a crash, it shouldn't necessarily pull any of the small components off of the board or itself if it does uh, take some abuse. I think it will stay there just fine. Again, it's only 30 grams all up, so that 
shouldn't take a huge impact. So when it comes right down to it, which one should you buy? If you're in the market, if you don't already have one, I think if you already have a Mobula 6, you should stick with that. There's no reason to really move to the UZ or Uzi 65. I keep calling it Uzi 65, so if I've messed that up during the video, please excuse me. I, I think you might want this if you can't get the Mobula 6 from one of your local shops. The price point is kind of a wash now. I mentioned that earlier that this used to be more expensive. When I started recording this video before I had looked again, I found this to be over two hundred or over a hundred dollars, and this was still at eighty-five. They have since put this on a flash deal. Of course, after the flash deal, it goes up to about a hundred dollars again. So there's going to be a price difference. But I think if you buy this, you should understand that, like me, you might or it's fairly likely that a motor is going to be a problem there's going to need to be some sort of repair and because that board is so small and because this is so compact in the center that it's a much bigger challenge to work on it's much more time consuming you have to dismantle a whole lot more uh, you don't have the easy connectors for your motors down there so it's going to take I would say at least 50 percent more time to do a repair if it involves a motor and if you aren't someone who likes to solder or you don't like to tinker you don't want to take that time you don't want to do that repair it's a lot easier to just buy another motor or set of motors and plug them in and then you're all set provided that the board isn't damaged so when it comes to the board they're both kind of equally at risk this one has three components integrated into it in that the vtx is also there i guess it's four flight controller esc video and a receiver whereas this one does not have the video built into the board so the risk is slightly less with this one and the board will be damaged because it has one less component integrated into it so they're essentially both the same price 50 cent difference you could probably find the mobile 6 all over the place i see that get fpv is not carrying it even newbie drones got this race day quads pyro drone good venture drones rotor geeks rotor village you, you can find the Mobula 6 in a lot of places just because it's been around longer versus this. You're probably going to have to go directly through Banggood. Uh, you might have a store that's carrying this, like maybe Grayson Hobbies is carrying that. They tend to carry some Ishim products from time to time. Uh, in the coming months, you may find that this is available from other sellers as well. So it's up for you to choose as far as which one I prefer. Because of my flight style, I think I prefer the Mobula 6. It comes in two different motor varieties. You have the 19,000 kV and the 25,000 kV. This one I'm looking at here, I think, is the 25,000 kV. Yeah, let's get that camera to focus there a little bit. So higher kV motors, a little less flight time, but a lot more pep in its step. The props does offset a little bit of that kV difference and the weight difference, but I still think this one is more agile. So if you like racing, you like going fast this is probably going to be the one you want to go for if you want longer flight time and again you're not worried about having to replace a motor you probably want the uz65 so if you have a mobile 6 leave your experiences down below if you have the uz65 leave your experiences down below let me know what you think about these two different quads kind of in the same form factor and what i think is probably the most popular form factor in this hobby I know it's one that I really, really enjoy, and I'm not even talking about just this size. I'm talking about 65, 75 millimeter, 85 millimeter, all sorts of different millimeters. This hoop style of form factor seems to be the most popular out there. Matter of fact, I think on Facebook, the Tiny Whoop Micro Racers Group is the largest FPV group that I'm aware of. So leave your thoughts down below, and if you have any other comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the section down below. I appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.